I had a bit of a close call the other day because taking a pilot to Slape Airfield. <laughs> he seemed a bit low. There used to be petrol pumps just there. Do you remember where the, do you remember where the gears are? Just a little run round the road in the Renault 4 CV. Well, morning all, it's a, a lovely bright day. It was actually quite chilly. We were scraping the ice off the car this morning, but I thought it was probably time to do just a quick update on some of the bits and bobs we've found to decorate the garage here at OCCHQ. And the first thing to actually look at is this lovely little trolley. I'm guessing this is probably what, 1950s or something like that, chrome casters on the bottom there. But it's just a really handy little thing and in surprisingly good condition. The original green paint isn't too battered at all, so I thought I will definitely find a use for that. And today it's being used to model some bits and bobs that we bought over the last couple of days. Yesterday we went to a couple of antique centres down in Shropshire and today we were at the car boot sale. It was, I mean, it was barely even daylight when we were actually at the car boot sale this morning, but there are very few left now that's going to start winding down as the, the days get shorter and it gets a lot, lot colder. Like I say, it was pretty chilly this morning, even now. There's a bit of a nip in the air, but yeah, let's have a quick look and see what we've bought recently to add to the garage here at OCCHQ. Probably the most interesting thing is actually this. This came from an antique centre yesterday, and it's the Leg Heavy Duty Hydrometer. And what is this for used for? Well, this is for testing the health of your battery, your car battery. Um, it's made by Leg Industries Limited of Williamson Street in Wolverhampton. So it's not come very far at all. It's not traveled very far, this. Now, what date is this? I'm guessing this is probably, what, 19... It could be 1930s, it could be 1950s, but it's probably somewhere in the middle, probably late 1940s, something like that. But it's just a really... I hope you can see that. I hope that's just a really great-looking display item. It also tells you how to actually use it. So you've got a few instructions on there. But I've never seen one before. I've never heard of this company, Leg Industries Limited, certainly in relation to car tools and that kind of thing. So I thought we will definitely grab that and for a fiver. I thought that'll be a, a nice little display item. This is the thing itself. So you've got this, so you've got the glass tube there and the little rubber thing on the end. And you put this, you attach this bit here onto the end of there and you dunk that in the cells on your battery. So on the old school batteries, you could put this in each of the cells and you will withdraw some of the acid inside. And when you assemble this thing, you put, if I just carefully put that down, this floats inside. So you put that inside there, suck up some acid into there, and depending on the level, you take a reading off there. I hope you can see those numbers on there, maybe, anyway. That's got a series of graduations on there, and basically whatever reading you get on there, you can have a look on the side of the packaging somewhere. Where does it say? There we go. So that'll tell you how, or the health of your battery. So you take your readings and you can tell whether it's full charge, half charged, or a bad cell. So uh, yeah, that's just a nice bit of period garage memorabilia, so I thought now we'll definitely grab that. And at the same place, we got this. I love the old gunk tin, I'm guessing, what, 1950, something like that. This is actually the second one of these that I picked up, but I think they're just such a lovely display item. I love the variety on there, the script, the old style script, and the little aeroplane as well. So that wins on many, many factors, and it's actually in quite good condition, it's not too bashed about. So I thought I will definitely add that to the collection. It's not even too rusty because sometimes they get pretty battered some of these things but yeah I thought that was really really cool. So yeah another great addition to go with the old battery hydrometer. What else did we get yesterday? This was on the same stall for a mere two pounds so again these decorative items that make their way oops, make their way into the garage here don't have to cost a fortune. This was a mere two pounds. Who remembers valve grinding? Dismantling your cylinder head lapping in the valves. I'd still do that from time to time and this is a kind of stuff you would use to actually seat the valves inside the cylinder head. So at this end you've got a fine grinding paste and this end you've got the coarse grinding paste. So you start out with that one and you finish off with that one. But yeah, we'll probably do a video about lapping in valves in the cylinder head sometime and we might even press this 
tub of Chemico valve grinding paste into use. You never know, but for now, it'll probably go on the shelf over there somewhere and look jolly splendid indeed. So we'll put that there. Right, next up, a couple of old spark plug boxes. No plugs in them, although I do have some plugs which are the correct ones to go in there if I wanted to. Both Champion, so this one is the Champion L10. And if you know your Ford Pops and the Ford Anglias, just like the Anglia we've just sold, then you'll know that Champion L10s are the standard, the original fitment spark plugs for those particular cars. I thought I'll definitely grab that. And they look, I mean, the boxes just look great as display items. I think these are a pound 50 each or something. Um, but yeah, they're just really, really cool. And this one is a much larger spark plug. And according to the blurb on the end, this is a C5, the detachable, and many of these early spark plugs, you can actually take them apart. And I did do a video about collecting old spark plugs and spark plug boxes a little while ago, and quite a few people watched it actually, much to my amazement. So if you want to learn more about collecting old spark plug memorabilia, just check that video out elsewhere here on the old Classic Car channel. But again, I thought they're just really good little display items to put here in the garage. So what else did we find? Well, this was this morning. And this is a really nice little underbonnet inspection light. It's called the Little Gripper. It comes complete with a wood lice. Where are we? There. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not sure if we can make out the, the lettering on there. But it says British Scent, and then the patent number, and the Baby Gripper. I'm not sure if that'll if that will actually show, if it'll actually focus on that. But these are just really neat. I've got one of these in the Dodge pickup, and I thought this would probably end up going in the Pilot. So you've got like a little spring-loaded clip, so you, you, you just open that you can clip it somewhere under your bonnet and you've got two jub uh, crocodile clips rather to attach to your battery and there you go. And a nice long length of lead on this particular one as well. And you can just use that as a sort of like an underbonnet inspection light if you break down on the side of the road. So again, another lovely old period motoring accessory. So what's that, probably 1950s? Possibly early 1960s, something like that. Could be a little bit older. I don't really know. It's the kind of thing that's probably made for a very long time indeed. I'll just need to check to see what size bulb. You can see it's got quite an old style bulb in there. So whether it's on 6 or 12 volts, I'm not quite sure. But if I'm going to put this in the pilot, it'll have to be 6 volts. But yeah, that's just a, a really cool old accessory and still perfectly usable. Another spanner, classic spanner time. This one you'll see has got a Ford script on it. And this number here is a number that I always look out for on these old spanners because the number, the part, and that's the part number there, 17016 and 17015 are the part numbers for the original tools that were fitted, that came as original fitment in the toolkit on the old sit up and beg Ford Pops and probably the Anglia as well that we had, maybe the Prefects and possibly even the Pilots. I'm not quite sure what the V8 Pilots came equipped with. But I always look out for these old script spanners if I can, and uh, recognising that part number, I knew exactly what range of cars this spanner would originally have been equipped with, uh, issued with. So, you know, for 50p or whatever it was, I thought that's coming home with me as well. And talking of 50 pence, that's what the asking price was on this old picture. I mean, it's nothing grand. <laughs> um, obviously, we've got a Jaguar D-Type. I'm not quite sure who's driving. I don't think it's Mike Hawthorne, but, but you know, we've got a long nose D type there racing at Le Mans, and then the and the gravel behind it looks like either an Aston Martin or possibly the V12 Lagonda, which didn't prove to be very successful at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty tatty. I mean, I'm guessing this was probably cut out of a magazine in the 1950s, but it's actually the fact that it's still in its old frame that really appealed to me. So I thought, well. It's not in great condition and I'll never get away with putting this in the house, but this can just hang up in the garage somewhere and it will just look perfectly in keeping because it's in this really old frame, proper old sort of 50s or maybe 1960s frame, something like that. So it's nothing special. There's no value to it at all, but I just think for the look that we're going for here in the garage at OCC, um, yeah, that's just perfect. And last but not least, this wooden box, this came, I bought this this morning, I get for the princely sum of £2. But I always try and look out for old boxes because they're ideal to store maybe tools, to have a little toolkit in the back of one of the old cars, to store old bulbs in, that kind of thing. They're just so useful and this is a, it's a really lightweight little box, still with the original catches on with the little manufacturer's name on there, which I can't quite make out, and the old leather handle. So I think that is just a really nice little box. So yeah, whenever I see these, I always grab them because I know at some point 
I will end up using it. They're quite handy for putting in things like electrical test meters, multimeters, that kind of thing, just to sort of protect them a little bit and not get too bashed around. So, yeah, I think that's probably two pounds very well spent. I think the gunk tin can live there for now. And the old hydrometer over there and the spare Dodge radiator surround that I had and when I bought the 24 Dodge over 10 years ago that grill surround came with it so I thought I'll hang on to that as a bit of a souvenir to remind us of owning that old vintage Dodge and it makes for quite a good uh, little shelf as well and there's a home for the D-type as well while oh, we're in the garage I actually had a bit of a close call the other day because you may have spotted in previous videos some of these old petrol cans that are hanging up but you'll notice a gap well partial gap because up there is the handle of an old shell can and for some reason the shell can fell off it separated from the handle landed on here which fortunately there's no paint on the top of the dodge and slid down onto the floor and there it is there is the guilty party i mean those cans have been hanging up there for I don't know 15 years possibly more than that so why it suddenly decided to part company because I think the handles are just soldered on or brazed I'm not sure but yeah that could have been pretty disastrous I'm thinking I might have to bring these down because if one can fall down the others could do the same and if they landed on something painted that would have been pretty disastrous so I think that'll be a bit of a warning that'll have to heed so I think before long we'll be taking the rest of these down I probably don't need them all <laughs> I probably don't need them all so I think I'll probably just keep the nicest ones and sell on the rest but yeah that was a bit of a scary moment but why that handle should separate from the rest of the can is anyone's guess what can was it? it's a shell motor spirit one down here oh, shame on you I know <laughs> so I'll have to try and reattach that yeah, that could Not have been. To go through them. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I think I can manage that job. Because of this electronic ignition, which it's been fitted with, uh, which is meant to improve things, improve the starting, and improve the running, but it does neither of those things. Well, it certainly doesn't improve the starting. Um, it will not start on the electric starter. You have to start it on the handle. And for some reason, this morning, it just took forever. Anyway, we're warming it up a bit. We'll charge the battery up a little bit and hopefully we'll take it for a little run because it's a lovely day today and as we're in mid-October you don't quite know how many lovely days you're going to get um, and it won't be long before they start gritting the roads as well which is another joy we can look forward to so once the salt starts getting put on the roads you really don't want to be taking these things out too often so uh, yeah Sunday day so we're going to make the most of it actually we were talking before about interesting old boxes and here is another one this would have been used for navigational purposes in the Second World War. This is the box for the Astrograph Type A1 Air Forces and US Army. So I'm guessing this was a, used in the US Air Force at some point in the Second World War. Cincinnati, Ohio, USA is where it was made. There's only a, yes, there's only a couple of shelves in there now. So it's an empty box, but I think we'll probably use this as a toolbox for the V8 pilot. I think that's the that's the idea with this one. This was a present on my recent birthday. And clearly people know what I like, including these old boxes. So yeah, I think we will press that into service in the back of that one once I make up a suitable assortment of tools to carry with us. Ideally before the weather turns as well, I like to get this one out and give it a clean. It does get a little bit dusty in here, so uh, yeah, she wants a bit, of a, a bit of a rinse down. Get the hose out and give her a bit of a rinse down and possibly even another oily rag whether I'll get a chance to do that this year or we'll have to wait till the spring possibly I'm not quite sure but yeah it's probably time for another oily rag and I would like to do this one as well because that's not been done for quite a few years I don't think so uh, it's probably high time we reach we reach for the boiled linseed oil and give them both the oily rag treatment well that should keep us going well that's us suitably refuelled and uh, I thought I'd just leave the battery on charge before we head out. It's pretty much charged up. Yeah, the plan is to go down to Slape Airfield so we will be taking a pilot to Slape Airfield which seems kind of appropriate so uh, let's get on with it.
Right folks, we are in Shropshire and the Slape airfield, the former RAF Slape airfield in fact. This was used during the Second World War and we've done a couple of videos already down here because it's such a lovely place, especially on a day like this. You get all sorts of aeroplanes pottering around and I thought what a great place to bring this. So, old pilot visits airfield. So seems, seems to be right somehow, doesn't it? But yeah, it drove down here very, very well indeed. It's such a lovely, relaxed, talky car to drive, do you know what I mean? It's just so easy. Once you're in top gear, it just ambles along at an indicated 40 without any hard work at all. Ooh, what's this coming over? <laughs> Where's he going? He seemed a bit low. They don't normally come over that way, but never mind. Hopefully we may see one or two old aircraft here today because there's usually something pottering around. So I think we'll just go and have a look at the planes. We'll let this cool off a little bit. I mean, the temperature will look fine. So we'll just let it have a little rest and enjoy the sunshine here at Sunny Slape. And then we will amble back a little bit later. Well, that was a nice little pop down to the Slape airfield, so we will fire up the oldie pilot and start heading back northwards. So, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a nice little run out, grabbing the last of the sunshine before the weather goes to pot. It's a lovely historic location this is, so it's always a treat to come down here.
turning circle. Not too bad, it's not too bad there. Super light steering with this vast steering wheel. And cross plies. And cross ply tyres, that's right. So. Right, let's go. Heading off down this old taxiway. Here. We haven't got to the bad bit yet. No, the worst bit is up there at the top where we go left. Yeah. The road is really, really bumpy, but here it's not so bad at all. So we'll just have a nice amble along here and then we'll take it slow when the surface gets really, really poor. It does a pretty good job of soaking up the bumps, but you can't expect miracles. <laughs> There's that old tractor up there as well. Uh, the the weird modified. Still being used? Yeah, still in use. Right, so this is where it gets really, really bumpy. <laughs> so we will go very, very slow. this one it's a lovely part of the world round here especially when you're viewing it down a nice bonnet like that I think we'll get some motor spirit go go juice yes go go juice Pull it round. I'll leave it here, I think. I'll do. Watch the MPG on this one. <laughs> well, late teens, I would have thought. Not a lot. Enough for an old one. Just thought on the way back from Slape I'd pop in and visit this wonderful old garage. I probably will do a video about this magnificent garage at some point, but this place dates to 1928 and I've known it for at least 20 years or so now. It's a fantastic old survivor. There are so few old garages around that are still like this to this day and it is just a magnificent place. And hopefully it will go on being a garage for many, many more years to come. This is where the Dodge pickup came from. This is where I bought the Austin A40 Devon from and so on. So sadly, Ted, Ted passed away a year or so ago. And uh, yeah, between him and his wife, Jan, they ran this place. They rescued it, brought it back to life. And hopefully it'll carry on being a garage for many, many more years to come. It's just a wonderful, wonderful historic setting here. And so many people in the area who are interested in their old cars will know this place. Lots of traffic comes past here every single day. Back in the old days, this was a single carriageway, either way road. And it was dual carriageway a few years ago, 20, 30 years ago, something like that. But at one time, this was just a single carriageway road. There used to be petrol pumps just there many many years ago and cars just like this v8 pilot would have been a regular visitor and with a big side valve v8 engine it's probably more regular than most anyway yeah just a quick look at this wonderful wonderful old garage um sadly the owner's not in i did knock on the door but there's no one in today but i'm on a day like this i can well understand being out and about but yeah i just couldn't pass up this opportunity to film the pilot 
outside this stunning old garage. Well, there we go, made it back safe and sound from Slape, all the way back to sunny Cheshire from equally sunny, as it happens, Shropshire. That put a few miles on it, I'm not quite sure how far we've travelled, but here's a, a proper little run just to really get everything warmed through properly and just see how it goes. So apart from that slight gremlin when you're starting up from cold, which I will have a bit of a look into, otherwise it seems to be running pretty well, which is, uh, which is good news, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than driving a lovely old car on a beautiful day like this and like I said earlier on you can never really guarantee just how long the nice weather is going to remain because there's a bit of an edge in the air the air the air wind rather is coming from a northerly direction so if that keeps up then it will start getting pretty chilly but the weather is looking all right for the next few days so hopefully we'll get a chance to give these things a bit more of an airing before the weather turns against us actually we thought as it's such a nice day we would pop the pilot away back in the oldy garage and get the Renault out because that hasn't run for quite a few weeks now so I would like to clean that one up a little bit like I said before you can never guarantee how many nice days you're going to get so Harley's just doing the honours with this one at the moment get that one out of the way and then we can dig out the Renault 4CV I mean really speaking the Renault couldn't be more different to the pilot I mean they're both 6 volt but that's about where the similarity ends um, obviously engines in the opposite end of the car in this one and whereas the V8 Pilot is just over 3.6 litres and a flathead V8 engine this has got a tiny inline 4 cylinder engine in the back of 748cc so yeah, a very very different car to drive they are both 3 speed, so I've got that in common although this is floor change and the Pilot is on the column but yeah, very very different cars to drive and let's see if I can remember how to run this one even how to start it up because it's been a few weeks since it last run This is the bit where it starts. Or not. The joys of owning old cars. Take two. Nearly. This one hasn't run in quite a while, so it's fair enough. There we go. The wonderful rumble of that little force in there couldn't be more different from the flathead V8 of our Ford V8 Pilot. Both three speed though, funnily enough, as is the Dodge pickup. I'll take this bit off as well. I just don't think I've primed up the fuel enough. I did pump it up a little bit on the manual priming lever on the pump, but I don't think I did enough. As soon as I pumped it all the way up into the carburetor's float bowl, then it caught pretty quickly. And it seems to be running okay at the moment. What's up? Right. Take it through. Well, you're volunteering. You're volunteering. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Yes. I've not driven this. It pumps. No, you haven't had a go in this for a while. Do you remember where the, do you remember where the gears are? Ah. Yes. Just like the Anglia. Down and back to the left for first gear. Still on a bit of choke. Phones are handy. Does it might break down? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> wow. Are we in? Are we in? Yeah. Right.
50. Wow, kilometers or mile per hour. Miles. Oh, that's the good one. Well, just a little run down the road in the Renault 4 CV. Uh, it's just start. The sun is just starting to lower a little bit, so we will give it a quick wash, and it can be drying off, and then it will be put away. I like to give it a bit of an airing, especially with winter coming up, because as soon as the bad roads get here, then it won't see much exercise, and things like hydraulic brakes and all these new modern newfangled inventions that they keep coming up with, they don't like sitting around for too long. So any opportunity I can get just to give them a bit of an airing it always seems like a very good idea and uh, I think the Renault was quite happy to have a little run out after a few weeks of inactivity so there we go thank you very much for watching please keep an eye on the channel for future classic car content just like this and a few more show reviews that kind of thing uh, yeah well it's been a very busy year for shows as you may have noticed on the channel so it will quieten down a little bit on that score for the next few months but we will hope to get to a few more events uh, even over the winter and into the spring so thanks very much for watching please keep an eye out on the channel for future uploads and there'll be many many more very very soon so bye for now what's he up to what are you up to thinking oh. 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 of course there's your pedal machine yeah. Your video went live very recently, didn't it? Mm. Documenting the, the conversion of that into a bit of a retro 50s special look. That kind of vibe going on, only using bits of junk that we had lying around, so that worked out quite nicely. Mm. Any new additions in here that you need to tell us about? Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, there's that nice Duckham's NOL uh, engine yeah, oil. That one came from Bista Heritage. Yeah. yeah, we saw that one at the beginning of the video, didn't we? So there it is in Sconston, mm. its new home in Ned the Shed. As is this castrol of uh, that one? Also came from oh, that came that came from Bister as well, didn't he? Right. And yeah. that saw. That came from an antique centre in Church Stratton. Well, I think we'll focus, focus, lost focus. Need to get some focus back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that no. came from an antique centre. Yeah, it's a lovely old, lovely old saw that is hanging up there. Yeah, it's looking really cool in here, young man. And who knows what will be added to it next year. <laughs>